Now entering Nerdist.com. <sighs> oh, excuse me. I didn't see you there. You, the casual listener who just downloaded this podcast. Welcome to another episode of Today We Learned. Uh, thank you guys for downloading this. Yeah, uh, thank you guys. Thank you very much. We this is our, it. is our 20th episode, the big two... Zero. This right? is twenty, right? Yeah, this number 20. twenty. Yeah, last week was the nineteenth, right? Four more years. Yeah, that's yeah. uh, yeah. This is twentieth episode, and uh, we are very happy that you've been listening. Wait, is this the twentieth or is this the eighteenth? The nineteenth? Uh oh, this is. You know what? I think it might be the nineteenth. I think it might be the nineteenth. Yeah. Let's scratch everything we've done. Scratch everything we've done. Strike it no, down. No, 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 we'll keep it. We'll keep uh, it we make uh, mistakes. Well, there's a <laughs> savvy listeners will have by now discovered our hidden episode. Yeah. Uh, if you piece together the audio that is underneath all the other episodes, it creates a bonus episode. What if that was true? What if I we were that, we were that smart. What if we were that, that incredible? Oh, like that's man. some that's some next levels like uh, Freddie Mercury. Like Beatles we we re- like we release stuff. it and and uh, we record it in stereo, but we only play the we only release yeah. the mono, so you have to listen to it in stereo. Yeah. If you if you dr- if you drop out all the bass, then invert the audio then crank then slow it down by 800 percent. there's got to be a way to do that like if you, if we record it in surround sound like in the third sound or whatever to where you can only hear you can only hear <laughs> you can only hear the bonus with the far right s- speaker yeah, playing I, I should also specify this episode can only be heard by dogs <laughs> <laughs> uh but we do regardless of what number episode it is we have a sponsor without whom this episode would not be possible and that sponsor is t fury t fury is your original pop culture t-shirt destination they sell unique designs every day since 2008. You can snag their t-shirts for just 24 hours starting at midnight. Then the cycle hours. begins anew. 24 hours. Yeah, they're a really fun, they're a really fun website. Uh, really cool designs, really cool stuff. If you're into sort of like, they have a wide variety of interests, whether you're Doctor Who, Pokemon, Game of Thrones, they have something for They have everyone. a lot of like mashups where it's like Doctor Who with Back to the Future and Time yeah, Traveling yeah. and Ghostbusters, you know, Catching Jesus types of things. They had a, they had a phenomenal H.P. Lovecraft and Snoopy mashup Cthulhu. with like little Cthulhu sitting on top of the Cthulhu. doghouse. So, guys, are you missing a shirt from the past? You saw something on T-Fury, you're like, I want that, but I blew it huge by missing the 24-hour window. When you want to get it again, well, head to T-Fury's gallery, where you can buy some of the old designs still in print and vote on others to come back from the dead, like so many zombies. Every two to four weeks, T-Fury adds more designs to their gallery, so be sure to keep an eye out for the return of some of your favorite shirts. T-Fury shirts, as we mentioned, cover most, if not all, of your favorite topics and fandoms. They have everything from gaming, sci-fi, anime, TV, movies, pop culture, cultured pop, and more. I don't know what that is. I guess it would be like Coke you leave out. They also have soda culture. Yes. And a horticulture. Ooh, that's, I don't know, I don't know what that's, that's a lot of cultures. That's a lot of cultures. Uh, so throw, much culture at cultures. the tip of your <laughs> mouse clicking finger. Their t shirts change daily, so please check back as often as you like. Also, don't forget about the T Fury after hour sale. If you miss the day shirt by only a little bit, they keep the sale going into the hui hours of the morning so, just for you. So if you get drunk and you come home and you're like, damn, I wanted that shirt. Go stop at Taco Bell, get some snacks, come back yeah, home, grab, get online. Gra- <laughs> grab your Doritos Locos Tacos <laughs> so you won't have to go Locos when you realize you've missed the sale. Because you haven't missed the sale. It's still going on. After yeah. Hours T-Fury. After hours. And this December, T-Fury has some awesome shirts that'll make great gifts for the pop culture enthusiast in your life without breaking the bank. Seriously. Check out tfury.com. See what today's shirt is all about. T-Fury, wear your art. On your sleeve. On your sleeve. On your sleeve. Wear your heart or your art on your sleeve. And also, while you're doing uh, things of a goodwill to nature like that, uh, since you just downloaded this, if you want to give us a good uh, uh, give us a good review and give us a like on iTunes, that would be awesome. Yeah, give us a thumbs up on Facebook. Uh, rate us four stars on Yelp. We Absolutely. understand the Cobb salad wasn't available that day, for which we are dearly sorry. And there's also an option to share this on Twitter and Facebook. on your If you're listening to this on your iPhone or whatever, you can share the link to this podcast on on the social networks that you uh, frequent, so that way it helps uh, bring us more audience, and and you guys can share. You guys can be the hipster of our podcast, being like, "I listened to it back when it yeah, was you can episode be, nineteen. You'll get an exclusive day one achievement. Day one, <laughs> we'll give you four plus bonus points. Yes, um, uh, you'll get you'll get four. You'll get forty learn bucks. You'll get forty learn bucks, and uh, which magic are point. which are redeemable <laughs> for fabulous prizes eventually. <laughs> you save it. There, you're also we also take Bitcoin and. I still don't know what bitcoins are. Uh, bitcoins are just an old wives' tale designed to uh, <laughs> frighten children from investing in non-paper no, currencies. Are ploids a thing? Are ploids a real No, thing? ploids were those things that you used to have on the back of uh, Cheetos and stuff oh, like good. that for I turning in. Anyway, anyway, guys. This uh, episode, uh, today we learned number 19. Really is a fantastic really, 
think you're gonna love it. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun episode. It's a, it's a lot of fun talking went on. Today. Yeah, Tom Sibley, you're gonna love him. Uh, thank you for listening. Absolutely. And uh, we hope you have a happy holidays. Absolutely, happy holidays. Uh, we'll see you next week. We'll you'll hear us next week. And uh, drive safe if you're driving, and work safe if you're working. And uh, fucking have an awesome day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. All right, welcome back to a very special edition of Today We Learned, this fun-filled precursor to your holiday week. Yes, yeah, this is, uh, this is, will be the week before the holidays, The week right? before Christmas. Absolutely. Uh, welcome and to all through the house, <laughs> nary a fact to be seen, not even one about a mouse. Or a rat fact, unless you live or with Jeff rat. Die. <laughs> I, should, I, I should call Jeff and be like, hey, we need a rat fact for the holidays. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way. I'm Dan Casey, yeah. one of your hosts. And my name is Razzle, also one of your hosts. And, and the stockings are filled with rat shit. <laughs> Come on, guys! And that is that the is, gift that keeps on giving. That is a gift and that today's keeps on... guest is uh, Mr. Tom Sibley. Hey, guys, my name's Tom Sibley. How are you? He's a very funny comedian in Los Angeles, and he's also one of the co-hosts of the Goof City podcast. Goof City podcast. And also the We Watch Wrestling We podcast. Watch Wrestling. Now... I can get what Goof City's about, but what do you do on We Watch Wrestling? <laughs> we Watch Wrestling is really about wrestling with your love of food. Oh. It's food addiction. It's a food addiction it's about, podcast. It's about portion control. Yeah, and... it's about portion control. It's about making the right choices. It's about wrestling with sweets addiction. We get a lot of people thinking it's going to be about like WWF yeah. and WrestleManias, oh. and it's not. It's, it's really about... Just making the right choice. Okay. Wait, what are you putting in it's your a, mouth? That's about, our, our slogan. It's about laying down a diabeting on poor eating habits. Exactly, exactly. But you see, even that lends it to wrestling again, yeah. which we're, we're trying to avoid. It's wrestling with food addiction. Yeah, you're wrestling with uh, you know your problems. You're, you know. I get it. I get <laughs> no, it. it's a wrestling podcast. It's about wrestling. I started watching wrestling less than a year ago because I got introduced to it by a comedian named Matt McCarthy who's mm-hmm. a very funny very guy very funny friend for those of you listening if you don't know he he plays Commissioner Gordon in all of the college humor Pete Holmes uh, Batman yeah he's skits. in all the Pete Holmes yeah. many many of the Pete Holmes sketches yeah, and yeah. everything and really funny guy very funny guy and another comedian named Vince Averill who recently moved here from New York who's an okay. extremely funny guy and uh, we just talk wrestling and it's been so fun it's been going and you've never watched wrestling up until this no, I never watched it, and I never. I just thought it was wrestling and stupid. But yeah, um, it is. when my, it's not. <laughs> but it's so it fun. Is, you it mean? it, it is. is. Everything's dumb. And you just stupid, need to. But ex- it's, it's fun. Like when you, you say everything ex- is done and stupid, do you mean in the grand scheme of life, like yeah. everything like we everything, do? Everything, okay, in well general, then, yeah. You know I mean? Like it's it's silly, but it's amazingly like it's. It's awesome. Do you it's, know what I mean? like it's, it's the purest form of theater, basically. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. It just and so... combines athleticism with soap opera in, yeah. in all the hilarious, amazing ways. Exactly. Absolutely. And I saw it live, awesome. and that's what hooked me in a fucking... So, oh, sorry. Can I? Yeah, you may. Right? You may right. curse. All right. Uh, can curse. Okay. Aristotle, can we? Bleep, Aristotle, edit can you bleep out? out that can we curse? Bleep that that out, was at the three thirty-five mark. <laughs> <laughs> Just go back. Just go back. We'll wait. We'll fix it in post. No, I went to in Reseda, California, where where Daniel Russo is from, mm-hmm. yeah. of Karate Kid Karate fame. Kid. And um, fact. an American Legion post that's like, like so small. And I saw wrestling, and it hasn't changed. It's still the wild, wild west. Is that where all your guys' Instagram pictures always come from? You and Bridenstine and all that. Yeah, like the, like, the rinky dink. Exactly. Okay. It's and it's so fun to see. Yeah. And after seeing that, especially, I was I was hooked. It's so fun. The pageantry of it. So even those small ones, because I've never been to a small one. I've been to the big WWF and the yeah. all WCWs. But the small ones is the same type of thing. Then it is. There's there's no lights. There's no big pyro or anything. It's just about the performances, and that's exactly what it is. It's a yeah. performance. These guys are working together, but which characters. I love. Yeah, they play up characters. And the first two minutes of the first match I ever saw, a body flew out of the ring and landed in the chairs in front of me, and it was for real. Yeah. And I had to hand all the broken chairs behind me to clear them out of the way. It was amazing. So Was that part of the skit, or was he... No, it was, it was, they call that a spot. Like it was a, it was a big spot in the show is they, they decided that the guy was going to go off and you know, it was unbelievable. So good. I couldn't, it's called pro wrestling gorilla in Reseda, California. It's, it's unbelievable. 
And then the other podcast is Goof City, which I like to describe as Mean Girls meets Cheers. Okay, I like it. I like both of those things. It's three people. We have a bunch of topics. We put them in a hat. We pull them at random. We talk about them for as long as they need to be talked about. And it's so fun. And it's it's really starting to find an audience. Nice. Awesome. Good. Yeah, That's I'm great. very man. happy good. with that. Well, check that out, audience of ours. But first. Did I just sell my butthole good enough, yeah, guys? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Welcome to the Tom Sibley Plug Hour. Yeah. Let's see what else we got. You too. What else? So we always like to start off the show by talking about your podcast in particular. But after that, we usually like to have our <laughs> guest I- give a fact about themselves, is something the they've part? learned recently. This is the okay. part. Is You've been preparing for this moment your entire life, assuming yeah. you were born several hours like, ago. Minutes, minutes ago. ago. You see, for those of you listening at home, if I said just think of a cool fact that you could tell someone either about yourself or whatever, you could come up with it immediately. No, you couldn't. It's hard. No, but I think <laughs> in a no pressure situation, just tell me something yeah. about you. Someone okay. could come up. But like right now, I'm terrified. Yeah. And the thing I'm going to tell you is really pathetic. Okay. But I think it's interesting. Sorry, we won't we won't laugh. We won't laugh. Uh, Unless okay. it's funny, in which case we'll yeah, laugh. Yeah. I found out the other day that the guy that plays Thor, yes. Chris Hemsworth, yeah. is younger than me. Oh, <laughs> and it just <laughs> is killing That's me. That's the worst. Oh. How, no, hold, no, hold Eating on. me from the inside out. No, hold on, because <laughs> cause I'm 31. How old are you? I'm 30. You're 30. Fuck. That even makes me more upset, because I, I th- thought he was closer to my age. But he's obviously not. He you're, perhaps he's is still you. in his twenties. He's uh, he's thirty. Ugh. Isn't that fucking ridiculous? It, he just, seems... <laughs> it just kills me. He's Wait, so right. beautiful. Razzle, when's your birthday? March fifth, March fifth, eighty two. Okay, he's August eleventh, nineteen eighty three. Oh, oh God, fuck him. June twenty third, nineteen eighty three. You're so close. I'm so close, so but close. it's it's it That's kills me. So, I hate. I'm the worst when it comes to comparing ages with celebrities or stuff like that, especially ones that are better looking and in way better shape than I am. This guy can adequately portray a god. Yeah, yeah. Well, to and be fair, and I was in my apartment. Yeah. All to be day. fair, he's Australian, which somehow gives them just uh, I think just a weird genetic geographical advantage. And I don't know why that is, but yeah. you're absolutely right. It's because everything in their homeland can and probably will kill them, so they all have to be like covered in rippling sheets of muscle. Yeah, but wh- how are they also so charming and cheeky Hugh and Jackman fun? Is and, you know, like, <laughs> just a little they can bit. Do it all. They're just a little bit drunk. Yeah, I, I guess so. But he doesn't look like a drinker. He's in perfect shape. No, no, no. He's... He just he boils he boils his chicken breast in. Vodka. Oh, okay, okay, that's so gross. Can you imagine what that would right. look like? Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> I can't imagine what boiling vodka would look like. I guess just boil. It would look like boiling water. Can but... you boil alcohol? Uh, great question. Isn't it already boiled? Right? Isn't it? Don't you boil? Did I just blow everyone's? Wait, wait. Let's take it back to my question real quick and talk about how great the question was. That's a very good question. No one could jump in with an answer for no. that. That's Can pretty you, good. That's a very good question. Can you boil alcohol? Um, that's very interesting because I know like alcohol is made by boiling things and taking the steam and fermenting. Yeah, and all that. well, what will happen is the alcohol will start boiling off first. Oh, because, yes. you know, you still in have vapor a, form. Yeah, you still have a percentage because alcohol boils at a uh, lower temperature, usually around like one seventy to one eighty something degrees. Okay. So the alcohol will start to boil first. That'll start boiling off, and by the time the thermometer reaches two hundred twelve f- degrees Fahrenheit, the boiling temperature of water, uh, all the alcohol should be gone. How do you know all this? You are a very smart man. For those of you who who (laughs) can't see me in the studio, I just tapped my head knowing this. I tapped my temples. He tapped his head. And and get this. Here's something. He knows that, and he's younger than both of us. Oh, fuck you. How old are you? Sorry, sorry. sorry, Kirsten, how old are you? I'm 25. Oh, your sweetness. Your, but I, your internal But I have sweetness. yet to portray a god, Norse or otherwise. So Not yet, but you got yeah. time. You got, I know, I just gotta you put, got five years. I got to put yeah. on about 80 pounds of muscle first. Well, he did it when he was 29. He's He was Thor. <laughs> That's the one sucks, too. Is he's, <laughs> no. Take, he did, when did Thor come out? Fucking three years ago, because Avengers oh, came out a god. year ago. Yeah, Thor was, uh, that I'm was leaving. 2011, I'm I want to say. I can't do it. Call yes. Us. May, it was uh, 2011. <sighs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> All right, it's now, so hard. It's so hard because then when you, you just He is a very the, sweet man. He's, he seems like he's awesome. Here's Can I tell you guys a fact about the alcohol boiling thing? You may. This, is, this could be interesting. Okay. More interesting than that stinking, sure. sexy, stupid, sexy Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Stupid, sexy flavor. All right. I want to just touch him. When I... When I didn't I, say, I mean, you know. <laughs> I, look, at, I can be a straight guy and want to touch a god, right? <laughs> oh, he's so beautiful. He's, he's a, a god. It's dude. totally normal. Yeah. I wouldn't want to, like, any insertion or even no, no, making no, no, out. No, 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 no. I wouldn't mind, like, cuddling, maybe. <laughs> I'd let him save my life. 
Yeah. I'd maybe pick him up from the airport if he needed it. You know, I'd do nice things for him. Or so we would shake each <laughs> we could shake each other's forearms. Yeah. Like, and he would look me in the eye and go, You are my best friend. <laughs> you know? And I'd be like, yeah. yeah, I am. Do a man shake where you grab yeah. the, the forearm you grab like the Here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the I'll only take, way. It's the only yeah. way gods can shake I'll hands. Take you yeah, yeah. Can we time. do one right yeah. now? You just think. God, it feels more powerful. Oh yes. Yeah. Do you know where that comes from? No. Do you? Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Fun fact. Here we oh, go. Okay. Good. See, yeah. This is so many this, facts. Facts. This facts. happens organic. This is what's great about this podcast is as you chat, you come up with more. You, so that's the idea, just like naming. You just okay. come up with things that you know about. Yeah, yeah. That is purely to see if the person has a knife, and a handshake comes from shaking out the weapon from someone's sleeve. Oh. That's really? cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It was just, you know, it's a perfect place to have a knife. This yeah. Yeah. band, it can stay there. Yeah. Your forearm is unbendable. Yeah. See. Unless you have a bendy forearm. If you do, please contact the podcast. So whatever. You, you would feel that. And then, uh, yeah, you just to see. Is, yeah. And then and then over time, it, it wasn't, becomes, you know, it yeah. just became how they shook hands. Uh-huh. Yeah. But the, a vigorous handshake and a firm one just meant you were really trying yeah, to shake Yeah, you're just trying to shake them down for weaponry. Weapon. I don't yeah. trust you. Yeah, but I'm, ah! but I'm still happy to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. if you think about, like, if you ever, like, take a few steps back from the concept of a handshake, it's yeah. very strange. That's weird. Yeah, you know? I'm a hugger. I'm a, I'll, I'm I'll, a hugger, too, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll start with the handshake, but then it's like, look, I'm going to hug you and check and make sure there's no knives on your back. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, yeah, but but it's, <laughs> it still feels, it's like a heart-to-heart thing, yeah. it's a connection, yeah. but like a handshake just feels like... See, I prefer uh. to take the uh, <laughs> the uh, the route that John Travolta went in Face Off, where he just rubs his son's face oh, weirdly, yeah. with, like with his fingers. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, when he he did the hand, or the, yeah, the, he just the, goes like rubs his hand down the kid's face. face. If you now, haven't seen, was, face was it off. was John Travolta? Was he was, John Travolta? Was, was he Castor Troy at the time? Was he, he was, was Castor Troy? My name is Castor Troy. Well, wait, no. When he did the face touch, was he Nicolas Cage or was he John? John Travolta, Travolta was still John Travolta at the time, and he, so it was a tender moment. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> Can I do it to you? You may. Yeah, but then, but then didn't <laughs> then, then didn't Nick Cage steal that though? Yeah, well, yeah, Nick Cage was acting the part. He was uh, undercover yeah. as a guy with a different face. Yeah. I always remember the one Damn, line from the, the uh, when his wife walks away and he's really, like, horny for his wife for the first time ever because it's not him. He goes, I hate that. I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. Yeah. I know that's an old chummy line. I love it. And how he wanted to fuck his daughter. How could he not? <laughs> yeah, that She's was... smoking uh, cigarettes in her so, panties. Yeah. Ah. That was a <laughs> little... I was like, uh-oh. John Woo, like no. But to take it back, I got yes. another fact, and this is this. Is, I don't drink anymore. Okay. But one thing I had heard when I uh, was drinking that a good way to get the alcohol out of your system, they I thought I read somewhere between seventy and eighty percent of the alcohol leaves your system through the vapors through your mouth. Really? Okay. So I don't know if that's true, but I read it somewhere. So every time I passed out, I pass out on my stomach, my mouth wide open, going. <laughs> oh, oh. And my room, though, would smell like a distillery. But that always led me to believe that, you know, it was working. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Meanwhile, I realized I lived in a distillery. Yeah, I realized that I was living in a factory. That makes complete sense because, you know, when people reek of booze, it's always like just... Yeah, it's from your mouth. You can just smell the alcohol coming out of your mouth. Yeah. I wish I didn't bring it back to that. I feel like we're having so much more fun. Well, while we're talking about beverages, alcohol is a beverage, we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite beverages here, uh, Dr. Pepper. I fucking love me some Dr. Pepper. (laughs) Dr. P. Some DRP, I'll tell you what, man. I I must have me 10, 15 Dr. Peppers. I almost had them. (laughs) Forrest Gump, come on. Forrest Gump, I love that movie. Uh, Dr. Pepper. I got to (laughs) pee. Jenny. Um, really, you go with Jenny? I, you um, I was so specific. Dude, come on, and you like went with Jenny. I, you bring up Ghostbusters or Batman, and I can just go. I can go all day. But Forrest Gump isn't one. I just lives like a box of chocolates. I okay. like to run. Oh, I'm the president. Oh, I play ping pong. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Spoilers for those of you who have not seen Forrest Gump. <laughs> I scream, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> that was Lieutenant one, Dan. Right? Lieutenant Dan. I, I scream. scream. <laughs> Alrighty, back to Dr. Pepper, which is fucking amazing. Forrest Gump, and fun fact. And then Lieutenant Dan sent me a letter that said we didn't have to worry about money anymore. And I was like, good. You know, one last thing. Yeah, but he never worried about it. Like, Sometimes there's not enough rocks. <laughs> I love me some Tommy Hanks. I'll tell yeah. you what. Anyways, back to Dr. Pepper, because I'm excited about this. She tasted like cigarettes. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. No, no, this is uh, this is fun. This is we're gonna. This is believe it or not, people. This is just a prequel uh, to set up uh, mine and Tom's podcast where he quotes Forrest Gump, and I try to keep him from doing that. Okay, so, <laughs> let's do that podcast. Let's it's called Gumpin'. Gump Stumpers. <laughs> Gump Stumpers. I'll tell you what, that would be a fun. Uh, that'd be a fun, stupid podcast that nobody would listen to. Is just people quoting movies the entire time. Wait, wait, wait. Gump up the volume. <laughs> <laughs> Where we always try to get uh, Christian Slater to be a guest, and he never. And he's like, I don't understand. I I had nothing to do with that production. (laughs) But you were in that movie. Pump up the volume. uh, You know, and you got you kill. Can you connect Tom Hanks and Christian Slater? Absolutely, I can. I can do that with anybody. Connect Tom Hanks and Christian Slater. Okay, uh, Tom Hanks to um, take your time too. You're you're, you're, you're getting really Tom Hanks starred in Tom Hanks (laughs) too. Tom Hanks was in. Tom Hanks was in. Let's okay, fucking Tom Hanks. Uh, Joe versus. Uh, we'll go Tom Hanks and you got mail. Go on. You've got mail with Meg Ryan, right? Meg Ryan was in. Um, Meg Ryan was in. Uh, um, she was in. Okay, here we'll go backwards. You're terrible. Uh, okay. at this. No, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> you got to give me time. You got to go through. You have to go backwards. I'll go backwards. Slater. Here we go. Here we go. Slater to uh, um, uh, Kevin Costner and. Slater to Morgan Freeman, and um, Slater often, re- often Slater, referred to as the Black Slater, oh, 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 Slater to Robin Morgan Hood, Freeman and Robin Men, Robin thieves. Hood, Men, Men of Thieves, Men of Thieves, <laughs> Christian Slater to, to Morgan Freeman and Robin Hood, Prince Men of, of Thieves, thieves. <laughs> to Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman to um, Jack Nicholson and. Uh, the bucket oh, list. the bucket list. You're going to Jack Nicholson already? How could you connect Jack Nicholson? Jack and... Nicholson, you can connect everybody through A Few Good Men. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah! Jack Nicholson and A Few Good Men with... um. Who, no, no, we, Jack, we, Jack Nicholson in The Departed with Matt Damon. Matt okay. Damon with Tom Hanks in... Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. There we go. <laughs> you can, Wait, were you trying to connect uh, Tom Hanks to and, Christian uh, Slater? And, oh, to Christian Slater. Yeah, I think we only did it in 15 moves. I thought you were trying to connect him to Kevin Bacon. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I was like, uh, just start there, with there, there was a good two years where I was re- like, I, me and my friends would play the Kevin Bacon game all the time, and we would just need to get like two moves and say uh, a few good men connection or things like that. Because once you get to a few of those movies with such star power, you're you're golden. Yeah. You can't stop. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Christian Slater to um, Tom Hanks. And uh, do you think that's at all enjoyable to listen to? I love it. My brother's gonna listen. My brother listens to this podcast, and he he probably will enjoy it. I I bet there were so many people before I said the departed because I couldn't think of it. There was people. There was probably rattling. just which definitely. Is, can I be honest? What. If you want a third podcast, this could be a really fun. <laughs> just the Kevin Bacon just do, game. Just do the Kevin Bacon game, and it's like a fifteen-minute podcast. It's just called podcast. the Kevin P- Bacon game. Three actors. Uh, it, Are you writing it down? I'll write it down. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, motherfuckers, here uh, there's somebody sitting at in their office being like, "I want to know about Dr Pepper." I can guarantee <laughs> you that's like, not the case. <laughs> <laughs> case of Dr Pepper. Anyways, Dr Pepper. <laughs> Created in the 1880s the of- <laughs> by Charles Alderton of Waco, Texas, Dr. Pepper was actually first served around 1885, although it wasn't really first it, nationally marketed until It wasn't created by a Dr. Stephen Pepper. No, okay. it, we'll get to that. Right. Don't jump the Real gun. quick, real quick, to explain what Daniel is talking about here is Dr. Pepper is the oldest major soft drink in the United States. Yes. Dr. Pepper is the oldest soft drink Predates in the United States. Predates your Coca-Colas, your Pepsi-Colas, Correct. your Tab-Colas, and your RC-Colas. Absolutely. And... Dr. Pepper's son, Stephen Pepper, well, his last name is Stephen Pepper Francis. He's he's since been married. <laughs> is the head of the LGBT? Um, is he just awareness. all of them? Yeah, he's the just the head of all he, LGBT. He takes care of all of, all of it, <laughs> and he's um, a straight man. It, 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 he's an just, ally. He's yeah, the straight he's, man. He's their a, strongest ally in a comedy. Tr- tr- and I feel like that's probably not in the Wikipedia, and it's not going to be. Yeah, but uh, be. it's you heard it here first. No, because <laughs> Big Pete is keeping him down. <laughs> Big uh, so, anyways, Daniel. Uh, Tell us about Dr. Pepper here. Um, well, uh, let me tell you about Dr. Pepper, Razzle. Uh, so, as I mentioned just a moment ago, it was invented in the 1880s by Charles Alderton of Waco, Texas. Uh, he actually gave the formula to Wade Morrison of Morrison's Old Corner Drugstore in Waco, who in turn gave it its name, 
Dr. Pepper. It wasn't really sold nationally until 1885, then it was marketed nationally in 1904. Jeez. It was introduced uh, at the Louisiana Purchase Exposition. You know that fun annual event we all go to? Louisiana Purchase Exposition 1904? It was a new kind of soda pop made with 23 flavors. Actually, uh, you know, when asked what it tastes like, one of the former CEOs, president of the Dr. Pepper 7-Up Company, W.W. W. Clements, which sounds like a poet of some renown. Turns out he's the CEO. W.W. W. Clements. Uh, he described it as a W. I've uh, always maintained you cannot tell anyone what Dr. Pepper tastes like because it's so different. It's not an apple. It's not an orange. It's not a strawberry. It's not a root beer. It's not even a cola. It's a different kind of drink with a unique taste all its own. I've also always maintained slaves <laughs> and continue, will continue to do so until <laughs> legally not allowed. That's the 24th flavor. <laughs> Can you imagine tasting... You're the first time you've ever tasted soda in yeah. Dr. Pepper in like the 1800s. All you've had your whole life is like water and Tea gruel and, and or just Yeah, dust. Yeah, dust. You've been drinking <laughs> dust nonstop. You've had a, and then you taste soda for the first time. Was it carbonated then? Yeah, I, I believe it was. Um... Yeah, because they had like seltzer water, right? Back in those days, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I guess they would have. Yeah, had I think to. they. I believe it was carbonated because otherwise it's not really cola. Like the, yeah, that's the whole like fizzy aspect that makes it a cola. Just imagine um, that feeling in your mouth that that like yeah. sparkly it feeling. Actually, it it preceded Coke by only one year. So wow. Coca Cola eighty six. So like the late. Like, everyone loves the 80s, but the 1880s, like, was a great time to be alive, especially if you just had cotton mouth perpetually. Yeah. Um, and it was 1885, so I got her at, at uh, the U.S. Patent Office recognized it in 1985, which, uh, in 1885, which was also the year the clock tower was built. In Back to the Future. <laughs> of course. Oh, it always, I thought you were talking about the one in Back to the Future. Someone killed a bunch but of people. But as to the subject of, of the name, there is some there's some uh, controversy, discrepancy about this. Uh, the truth is lost to the sand, the peppers of time. Uh, some folks what believe. What are you doing? <laughs> some folks believe that uh, pepper could refer to pepsin, an ingredient included in a very early recipe of the drink, cocaine, be- or the pep it put in drinkers' steps, okay. cocaine. However, others believe that there was a real Dr. Pepper, which is the legend I choose to believe, namely a Charles, a Dr. Charles T. Pepper of Rural Retreat, Virginia. Chuck T. Pepper. And get this, he traded, he traded the guy his name in exchange for his, do- he named it after him in exchange for his daughter's hand in marriage. So. Unwillingly for the daughter. Yeah, he's like, well. Sex slavery. What can you give me? Will you name a soft drink after me? Can what you makes imagine? it a soft drink? Right? Alcohol, right? There's Isn't no alcohol. The in it. All right, <laughs> but <laughs> done. You see, this I don't refer to like milk as a soft drink. No, no, well, but it's, milk is not something that would be served along with, with alcohol. With a tap or something like a tap, like beer would come out of the tap fountain, and soda, like the term soda jerk. Uh, soda yeah. is it, like soda is soda pop is from soda jerk, where you had to jerk back and like. Yeah, jerk off. Yeah, when you to enjoy it, <laughs> you just jerk off while you're for drinking the, it. For those of you not uh, not knowing what we're talking about here, or I mean, talking about jerking most off. Of, most of you guys probably do, but when you buy beer, yeah, uh, those of you who haven't had a phosphate down at the <laughs> pharmacy or grabbed a malted recently, <laughs> yeah, or if you haven't jerked off, those, <laughs> I stop. I'm sorry, I'll stop saying jerk off. They're uh, they're like when you go to when buy. When is be- the last time you jerked off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I'll stop. I'll stop. Sorry. I don't know, two days ago, probably. I don't know. I've been putting off myself. When did I last drink Dr Pepper? Let me count. Yeah. I'm trying to do one of those things where you you don't for a while, but it never lasts. Anyway, yeah, I'm like the master. That's of my, how you get I'm, wet dreams. I'm the worst of my master. Yeah, I've heard. It is fun fact. You got, but you gotta and I'm stand, an adult, stay and I'm true. An, I'm an adult, and I don't want those. Yeah, it's fun yeah, fact. I, Anyways, uh, when you when you get beer when you buy beer from a draft, you get the draft. You know, you you pull the one nozzle and you get the uh, you get your beer. But when soda was first invented, you'd have your syrup and then you'd have your carbonated water. Yeah, and in order to get a soft drink. From you know, like a soda pop shop or whatever, they would have to jerk the nozzle back and forth so that way they would get equal would parts syrup the and oh, equal okay, yeah. parts uh, carbonated water. So good to know. Yeah, you see, this also harkens back to an age when soda was drank with its original use of being this occasional treat. Yeah, it wasn't like a. I'm sick of everyone constantly it's being like soda is so bad for you. It's so bad for you. It's no more. It's I know it's really bad for you. 
but it's only meant to be drank yeah, it's every d- once in a it's while. It's dessert water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not- But people, it's just, have you ever seen someone like first thing in the morning, they crack a Diet Coke? Oh, yeah, oh, I'm just, God. they're like, oh, I don't drink coffee. I'm like, you're a monster. Yeah, exactly. They're like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know I drink coffee. I never wanted to have to depend on something. And they crack yeah. a Diet Coke at like 7 a.m. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you just see them like taking it. They have an IV bag next yeah. to them. <laughs> Those first oh, few sips. I'm just doing the do. Yeah. <laughs> Those first few sips of a soda, like right off the top. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> Speaking of things we hate, this yeah. is a seamless segue. Oh, I love uh, minorities. A lot of, a lot of no. people, uh, <laughs> just so you know, we're uh, all different shades of white. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm the eczema shade we of are, white. We are the Santa Claus shade, as far as that, <laughs> I, I am, that woman on Fox News. Did I am you hear about that? Yeah, that? How dumb is that? Megan Kelly of Fox News, in case you folks uh, just uh, have been living more fruitful uh, existences. <laughs> Uh, recently went on air saying that both Santa Claus and Jesus were historically white. <laughs> she has since uh, defended her statements as being humor, but given that she's just a straight news anchor, uh, yeah. come on, lady. Get yeah. Well, you know what? Can I devil's advocate this? Uh, you can may. We, can we talk about can this you for Santa's a sec- a, Can you Santa's advocate this? devil's advocate Can white. I? <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to Santa's advocate this. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you live in America, they are classically portrayed as white people. Yeah, but that's only because of Coke. Coca-Cola, the the Santa Claus we know today was invented by a Coca-Cola marketing team. Is that true? Yep. Okay, Razzle. And that sounds like okay. some conspiracy shit. Also, speak in my also language. they invented polar bears. Previously, all bears were brown <laughs> or black. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Did they breed them? Are polar bears real? <laughs> no. They just, or are they, just... they just paint bears. Pol- polar bears are as real as Jesus and Santa Claus. So they're extremely real. Super real. <laughs> they and they in exist inside they of us. They're the hearts. Trinity and the North Pole. And they're all white. Polar bears are white as well. No, yeah. but the thing that a lot of people, uh, you know, probably not us because we're all doing this, a lot of people hate this recorded sound of their own voice. Uh, this is true. And there's a reason for this. It's because Why? the skull changes the resonance of our voice from within to create more bass. So when you hear your voice, you're like, wow, I sound like a rich, bassy dude. Like, Bossa Nova. I sound like I, yeah. a little Barry White over here. Then you hear yourself on, on recording, you're like, oh, that's horrifying. That's yeah. not what I sound like. Who's this? Did someone dub this after the fact? It sounds nasally yeah. and disgusting. Yeah, when we hear a digital recording of our voice, it's a little unfamiliar to ourselves, but it's exactly how other people hear it. Uh, Ugh, so that's the, worst, that's the worst news of all. Yeah. The shitty recording that you that's, hear, that's, that's what, what you what sound people, like. Yeah. That's I why actually, anytime I uh, anytime I record my voice, I transcribe it so that way when I do re-listen to it, I just say the words as it's happening, so I still hear it. I understand that, that makes sense. Now, do you guys listen to your own podcast? Do you listen to this podcast? I do only because there's things that I say and and do that I want I don't like, so I'm trying to fix them. It's like listen, so, it's like watching game tape. It's like watching game tape. No, I I, to- I I release two podcasts a week. Yeah. I, I always listen to them. Yeah. Some of them like more than once. It's helpful, you. But it is an initial period of slogging through. Like oh. I hate my fucking voice. Yeah, yeah fucking you, well, voice. it feels it feels weird and a bit self serving. You're almost like uh, this is like I could be listening to anything that I haven't yeah. listened to. I already said these things. No, but I mean, if it's like a quality control, of course, thing. I want to know how it's sounding and like yeah. where it's going. Yeah, I want to know the flow of it and everything. But I, yeah, I, absolutely. I was so embarrassed. I was like, you have to listen to it. It's actually a good thing to listen to it. But it was that sort of like how fucking conceited are you yeah that you're listening to yourself talk right now yeah. but you know, that's yeah what, that's that's the world we live in so we hear it from the inside right no we're our ears are hearing it but our skull is it con- vibrating it's, so, yeah it hears yeah. yeah the way it resonates through your skull it makes more bass because your skull has fantastic acoustics i mean yeah well i mean yeah you can you can feel it throughout your well, head it just when you speak. uh goes into your eustachian tube so Ooh. is it kind of like like when you're at a concert and you plug your ears it sounds cleaner and a little more bassy because yeah you're hearing it from the like the your skull versus your ears picking it up maybe yeah and i feel like everyone's natural reaction to hearing their own voice is screaming I, no and crying it's 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 almost like god i, I don't sound cool i thought i sounded cooler than yeah, this everybody and i think it's because cool. you hear the bass and you associate that with like yeah. some kind of smoothness all right yeah all right oh, bono. i hear i hear, I hear slap bass in my head as well. <laughs> <laughs> every time i talk i hear slap bass what <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anyone but i've hired a jazz musician to follow razzle around <laughs> in his everyday life oh can i tell you guys something about jazz bass yes. you may okay and and funk slap bass uh-huh it. all right i just did a short film for no money last weekend okay. for two days grueling two days but I did it because the guy that's scoring it is named Tony Levin 
Do you know who Tony Levin is? He's the basis of King Crimson and Peter Gabriel's touring company. And he's scoring the movie. And he invented the funk finger, which is finger extensions for when playing slap bass. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wait, so is this is like the score gonna be like one? It's gonna be all Seinfeld. No, that's a trumpet. Just yeah. <laughs> well, he could include a trumpet in. Yeah. Is he, it going to be a multitask. funky bass trumpet though? He uses uh, funk fingers on the trumpet. Uh, here's here's a fun fact. It's getting uh, the holiday season. And um, whoop de do boop ba do a bit ba do bo do do do. No, that's good night, sweetheart. No, that's not a. I'm I'm Don't dreaming of a. It's the same. Is that that's also, the same? As, also orchestrated by Mr. Levin. What you just also, heard. but it's also mm-hmm. I feel, isn't that this whole can, podcast has been orchestrated? Yeah, by Tony like, Levin. I feel like that sounds like the also it's also could be the entry intro of I'm dreaming of a white Christmas on Home Alone like bo bo do 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 good night uh, sweetheart but it also you could dream do the, of a white oh uh, I think I sound perfect <laughs> <laughs> actually what like, you're is, hearing <laughs> actually actually what you're hearing is I'm dreaming yeah. of, I'm <laughs> dreaming of a white Anyways, uh, holiday movies aside, Home Alone's a great Christmas movie. Die Hard, I know Tom's a huge Die Hard fan. He's got a Nakatomi He's tattoo. He's a Die Hard, Die Hard. He's got a Nakatomi Plaza tattoo on his arm. Anyways. I do. Uh, and uh, a lot of people buy Christmas trees during the holidays, and they'll buy artificial trees, and they'll buy real Christmas trees. But Razzle, isn't it better to go green? Isn't it better not to cut down a tree and to buy an artificial Christmas tree? Uh, I'm glad you asked that, Daniel. I am, too. I the, feel like there's a curveball coming our there's way. A, there's a get ready for the twist I would, answer. <laughs> I would never tee you up for get, that. <laughs> you feel teed up, though. I feel like I something bad's coming. Well, I'm ready to swing, and I'm probably going to miss because I do that Surely this has to be everything. the greener choice. No, believe it or not, an artificial Christmas tree would have to be reused for more than 20 years to be considered greener than buying a fresh cut tree annually. Via the New York Times, an environmental consulting firm in Montreal found that an artificial tree would have to be reused more than 20 years to be greener than buying a fresh cut tree because the calculations include greenhouse gas emissions for the the production of it, uh, the resources and the boxing and all of the health impacts of it. It's not because you think about all all the plastic. And how much all the plastic and that fumes has. that the factories are putting off, it's just it wouldn't. I mean, they they manufacture so many. I think I read uh, a week ago that they sell like five million artificial Christmas trees a year globally, or something like that. That number is probably wrong, but I mean, they sell a lot of those, and people will only use them for like three years, so they toss them. And it's I mean, it's just well, plastic my mother, and metal and, my mother used ours. I would think she still has some yeah. of them. So she's the. She's my the mother's great, a great yeah. woman. She's an exception to that rule. Well, they also but don't what? make them like they used to. <laughs> they don't. They don't make them like they did twenty years ago, where you actually. And they don't make moms like they made my now, mom. Now they now the now the Christmas trees are like all, all on hinges. Artificial trees are all on hinges that fold down. But when I was a kid, as a, oh as yeah, a dude, you had to, they were color coded and you had to yeah, put them exactly. in by layer. Exactly. They don't yeah. do that anymore. But, I mean, I'm sure they do on the bigger trees, but I think they're all hinged, especially with the flock. You'd get that white. The white snow. What on kind it, of be good. effect, though, on the reverse side of that? Okay. I'm going to Santa's advocate this. Santa's advocate. <laughs> what? Um, what you call it? What effect does a Christmas tree farm have on the Earth? Yeah, aside from fresh oxygen, I don't know. But if they cut down, I don't know all that farming on those Christmas trees. I mean, you're cutting down a lot of Christmas trees. At, you know, every year. That's they don't grow to full size in a year. So like you're, it's going to be like if you if you cut down a field of actual evergreen Christmas trees, it's going to take more than five years to actually be able to resell those trees again. Yeah. So that can't be good for the environment. That's true. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Okay. According to this article by the New York Times, uh, artificial ah, Christmas trees are liberal not liberal rag. So, uh, according to Wikipedia, the wiki page for Christmas tree I'll trust production. This. Uh, Christmas trees usually take an average of six to ten years to mature for harvest, and each year, seventy-three million new Christmas trees are planted. Ugh. So they're always, you know, it's just like crops. You're always, uh, you know, cycling the fields around. So you don't want you want to have one life. So out. every year, every ten years, seventy-three million Christmas trees are planted and are this chopped. Is, this is in North America. Alone. No, I thought he said planted. No, that's every year, seventy-three million are planted. No, every year, seventy-three million are planted. Uh, let me see. If Wrap your head here. around that number real quick. That's seventy-three million. That's a lot. That's a I'm because I I could wrap my head around about fifteen million. I passed that. They, I'm they like, sell, oh, they sell about 
40 million live trees in North America each year. Can I tell you guys, yeah. when I was a kid, my father were, uh, was a doctor. He's, well, he's a doctor, and he's a radiologist, and he really helped this guy, and this guy was the owner of Christmas tree farms across Pennsylvania, and he was, like, beyond rich. And he was like, I want you and your family to come to my house. His house was a castle that was <laughs> sat upon the top of a Christmas tree farm that was just Christmas trees as far as the eye could see. And he made this stew and he threw a bunch of nuts in it and it was gross. This, was and you've say, never seen your parents since. He had an organ in his house that like went to the ceiling, as high vaulted ceiling. Hold on. No, this sounds this like guy. the beginning of like a, a Stephen King or like a Joe Hill book. I, yeah, it's one of those things as a kid that you happen and you take for granted. And then as yeah. I'm saying it to you guys, I'm like, this is a fucked up story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He's just the dude that lives it. in the Christmas tree palace. He was. He sent us, the first thing he did was sent us up to a room that was filled with stuffed animals that were life-size so, like, if it was this horse stuffed animal, it was the oh size of a horse. No, hold huge on, huge bears. You, how old were you at the time? Because you could have been a small child, and everything I was a very could... small child. <laughs> <laughs> so this mansion could he be like he was six this, inches tall. <laughs> this, this mansion could be in. I mean, because things like, in like a cul-de-sac just, neighborhood. <laughs> Hey, he could have, he could have had like a, a front normal front yard full of Christmas trees. Yeah. Oh well, shit. Oh, here here's the thing. While we're quick, this isn't a, this is gonna be funny. While we're telling this, while we're talking about Christmas tree stories and all that about Christmas trees, I gotta tell this funny story because this is a really funny story. Uh, and this goes. I, I gotta shout out real quick to my brother. He already knows where this is. What's going. What's your brother's name? My brother's name is Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy. Thanks for listening. He's gonna know. He already knows where this is going. But anyways, my uncle, my dad's twin brother. Is he jerking it? <laughs> <laughs> My, Jeremy, stop. My, uh, Jeremy, stop jerking it for like two seconds. My, uh, uh, my uncle Dwayne, my dad's twin brother. Not he, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. No, no. Okay. I, fuck. I wish my uncle was Dwayne. Can you imagine? Brother. That'd be so cool. Dude, that'd be so cool. I would not be here. I'd be like on the yeah, set. Be, no, no, I you mean, would be here. What, I mean, you think uncle The Rock Dwayne's is just going to give you millions of dollars <laughs> no, and be like, come on set with no, me? No, but I'd have... I'd have a better podcast because I'm The Rock's nephew. I don't know. I'd have a podcast with him. No, you'd be douchey and drive like no. an Audi and be yeah. like going to a club It would club be tonight. the two of them. It would be called Between the Rock and a Hard Place. <laughs> I love it. Anyways. We've come up with some great ideas. Absolutely. <laughs> this uh, podcast. These, these are, it's a great just, development. Just so, everybody, yeah, we got, yeah. just so everybody knows, this since it's recorded, we have copyright. Oh, yeah. We own all this. We, we own all this. Fuck this. you. So fuck you guys. Anyways, long story short. It's a, uh, it's, I'll tell the story. Too as, late. Come on, someone okay. was thinking. Here we go. Aristotle was thinking. Aristotle's it. like, where the fuck is this going? Anyways, okay. My dad, my dad's brother, my uncle Dwayne, would always play jokes on us. Like we're a very practical joke family. Now, one Christmas, one Christmas Eve, before Christmas Day even set, not a my, creature was stirring. Correct. <laughs> before Chris, before midnight on Christmas Day, my uncle you threw up the sash. My uncle put a. Uh, he put a Christmas tree on the side in front of our yard on the side of the road with tinsel and some boxes to make it look like we were already done with Christmas. <laughs> it, it wasn't even Christmas yet, and you look out and if you're driving by our house, you see our Christmas it's tree. Like something went terribly you, wrong. You, Is that just to fuck with the neighbors? That's just to fuck with the neighbors. <laughs> 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 Exactly. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It gets better. Oh my better. god, that's so funny. It's very funny. It's very funny. It even gets worse. So listen to this. <laughs> so he does that, right? So we 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 catch this. So we go and put it back in his in his yard, right? So we're like, oh, we got Escalation. him. We got him, and we put maybe some more things or whatever. And we had an old, uh, if I remember correctly, there there was a time where. Uh, one of the governors, Doug Figer, I think, uh, the the Figer who's his brother wrote My Sharona. He was running for governor of Michigan, and we had one of those old, you know, those those uh, vote for me signs. And there was a while where we kept putting that back and forth in each other's yard. So we put it in his yard with that sign. So we're like, hey, we still have the sign, and we put the Christmas tree. The next morning, Christmas morning, it's back in our yard, and we're like, okay, touche to him. We'll keep it. Me and my brother. This is why you don't prank me and my brother. We contrived the idea. Of we're gonna hang on to it and make him think that he won. Okay, now in Michigan, uh, as do most cities, they have they give you like a good two months to put your Christmas tree on the side of the road for the the city to pick it up for free. Uh, they'll give you a good two months, and the cutoff date is like February fourteenth. So you have until February fourteenth to get rid of your Christmas tree, and the city will pick it up for free. Okay, so. We realize this. So from December 25th until the cutoff date, <laughs> the we, long con. we went around and picked up as many Christmas trees as we could find. 
Now, if you were to walk behind our garage in our house, we had stacks. We probably had 60 Christmas trees stacked like we were like horrendous we were, fire hazard like, for your home. Like, you know, we were, you and your brother were meant to be serial killers. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and thank absolutely. God you found practical so, jokes. So, so, so <laughs> fine line. So, yeah. we, we had <laughs> very fine. We, we had part. like 60 Christmas trees just hidden behind our garage Wait, just for replace, two months. Replace Christmas trees with little boys' bodies. <laughs> <laughs> So the cutoff date comes, and we had like an old fence and everything, like we just sitting there blocking it. It, it was we had like aisles and everything. Now we had a bunch of friends with trucks and trailers because they all hunted and rode jet. Where'd you grow up? Bay City, Michigan. Oh, okay, yeah. So we I had like I have any idea. We, <laughs> oh, good time. Uh, uh, <laughs> we we have like these sixty trees that we've been saving up and grabbing from people's yards that they were throwing out for two months. So the d- very day after the cutoff point. We call up our buddies and we're like, it's go time. So we he lived on a cul-de-sac, so there was like an entrance and an exit. So he was he, he was on the, he was he was on the corner of the of the busiest one of the busiest streets in town. And so he was on the, the one end of the cul-de-sac where when you leave his house, you're on the busy street. But maybe four houses down is the entrance to that cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. So we came in the entrance of the cul-de-sac, parked three houses down from his house. We had so many friends. We unloaded and set the trees up in a matter of two minutes. My cousin Adam was in the front room with his back facing us on the internet, on the computer. We unloaded them. And <laughs> Did like, he have no idea? He had no idea. We unloaded them in like two minutes. And because we had so many, like it was just hustle. We had so many friends doing it. It was awesome. And we had an old fence that we sprained trees for sale on and we put it on the corner. And this, he lives on the busy street and he was, he was pretty popular in the church too. So the next day in church, like everybody's seen it and was the like, satanic what's going church? on? No. Okay. Uh, but anyways, so we all, we did this, right? And we we're like, oh, that was awesome. The very next morning we get a call. For my uncle, and he's he calls out he calls our house phone, and he, my mom's name is Joy, and he's like he's like yeah Joy, let me talk to the boys, and we, <laughs> never he, a good sign. He he, <laughs> he hands it because he he know like he knew it was us like obviously sure. like he because he's a smart guy and uh he he give he the me and my brother pick up the phone and all he says is. Good work. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. I was so worried he was going to be pissed. So, he was like, he was like, he was like, that's good work. Good work. And uh, then uh, like on Easter, he we, we went to my grandmother's house on Easter and he's like, I seen a toilet on the street and I was going to put it in your front yard, but my wife didn't want to have a hundred toilets in my front yard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Were you guys kind of legends oh, after so, that? Yeah, it was so funny. Like, no, I mean, it's, he, it's still a funny story because it's so, it's such a long con. It's so fun. But anyways, that's a funny Christmas tree the story. The long cons guys. are the best cons. Oh, the best cons. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this isn't cons. really shifting gear slightly. This isn't really a con, but it is uh, something that it's a bit of trickery. You might not expect it. You know, craft singles that you know we you've had a million grilled cheeses with them over the years. The, Can I just ask plastic. real quick? This is gonna be something gross, isn't it? No, it's not gross. It, it's a little unnerving, but not gross. Okay. Like, uh, Kraft Singles cannot legally be called cheese. Oh, God. Of course that's gross. The full name is Kraft Pasteurized Processed Cheese Product. Because less, one... less than 51% of it is actually cheese. Oh. The upside, though, four slices will give you 100% of your <laughs> daily calcium allotment. <laughs> So as long as you're okay with soylent cheese, oh. yeah. But here's the thing: who's who's making grilled cheeses with less than four pieces of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> uh, people that are bound to suffer from osteoporosis later yeah, in life. Yeah. How did we get to this point as a society? It's a cheese. Pro- anytime something's labeled as product. something product, <laughs> how do we get to the point of society where we're okay with like it's not really cheese, but you know, so close, be- en- close <laughs> enough, <laughs> yeah. gullet. Oh, God, that's so disgusting. Oh, that's so gross. I'm not surprised, though. I always found that stuff gross. And speaking of disgusting, I'm glad you brought up disgusting things. I am. I love bringing up so disgusting. So the Civil War, it was a horrific time to be a soldier. And yeah, uh, South arise again. Apparently, on... <laughs> <laughs> that's not my stance. I'm just fucking around. I love how... People, <laughs> I'm from Pennsylvania. People I don't, don't know. know. People who don't Wasn't know... Wasn't that time. one of those... Was one of those... Uh, Border states where we weren't sure whether to trust you or not. What Pennsylvania? Yeah, I I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not good with facts, but I know a lot of people in Pennsylvania act like they're from the South. People who don't know Tom are going to listen to this podcast and think here's a guy who has a wrestling podcast. Well, wrestling he's, with food addiction. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He he, he watches wrestling. But he supports he's states' rights yeah. vehemently. Yeah, absolutely, I do. I'm, anyways, I don't know. Anyways, Civil War. Yeah, Civil War. Uh, I just read this earlier today on the uh, second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. Robert E. Lee came down with a case of diabetes. 
diarrhea, which is what many or some attribute to his making poor decisions in that battle. Oh, wow. That's why it was such a it was a very bloody affair. Uh, and the thing is, it was like it sounds funny to us now because like diarrhea is sort of this like comical thing, but back then it was a really horrifying thing to happen to you because you know with the along with the accompanying weakness and dehydration, it was a leading killer of soldiers in the Civil War. It uh, ki- disease like that killed twice as many soldiers as battle injuries. Dysentery. Yeah, dysentery, like all that, st- like, all that stomach stuff. Like a lot of people died of gangrene from infections from wounds. So, uh, yeah, Robert E. Lee, indigestion. A lot of dead bodies. I, I I could see it, man. I mean, if, if you have the trots, you guys ever hear it called the trots? I have heard it called. Uh, the do trots. you know why they call it the You're trots? You're hot to trot because <clears throat> you keep trotting back and forth to the bathroom. Yeah. As someone that had the trots just this earlier this week, oh. I can I was not making good decisions. And, you're not and I would keep myself inside because I don't think I was making the right. And decisions. you're not allowed to go in. And that's goals. why you'll yes. never eat craft singles again. Yeah. I just ate a whole thing of pasteurized cheese product. Today's episode I... is brought to you by Craft Singles, your number one <laughs> cheese product. When your cheese isn't good enough, cheese product. Imagine if the other song was like, it's kind of like cheese. Fuck you. (laughs) It is a cheese product. Yeah. There is at least 49% cheese in there. Or, you know, they could just embrace it and be like, legally, we can't be called cheese. And, like, make it fun. (laughs) Like, what am I eating then? But illegally, we can call it anything. Yeah, yeah. We can call it magic blood diamonds. Here's a... Blood diamonds. Here's something random. I have it written down, uh, and I have a notebook where I, when, when I hear facts or weird things, I want to I want to bring it up or whatever. Um, here's something I, I I'd like to discuss. Um, the uh, I was at a holiday party, and Dan can look this up because I don't have all the all the, I don't. I was at a holiday party last week, and I don't have all the the facts. So once I say this, Dan could probably look it up and be way smarter on the subject. But anyways, uh, this chick, the, the this girl that was there had uh, fake breasts. And we, there was the discussion going on about, and they were amazing, by the way, just so everybody knows. But apparently, now they weren't. There's paint they, a picture for us. Just well, uh, what did uh, she look like? She was very attractive. What was she wearing? Uh, yeah, she, I'm not going to get into that. No, uh, seriously, like, like, <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm, not gonna get, I'm not going to get into what she was or was not wearing. Was she showing uh, cleavage? You could, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, <laughs> no selling me on the these, sexual side. Listen, listen, a sensible not, shawl collar cardigan this, this from Lord a, and Taylor. Yeah, the interesting That's part cool isn't this, the interesting part isn't how sexy she was. Uh, the she, there's saline fake breasts. And then she had soybean fake breasts. What? Her fake breasts were made out of soybean oil or something like that because apparently soybean the, they use soybeans now to make fake. Breast implants because they're less dense or something like that to where you can when when you need to do mammograms or whatever that is to check for cancer or anything like that it, they're less dense and they're easier to they're easier to replace and to re- gotcha. do all of that for it's more for cancer. Yeah, you can purposes. just go down to Starbucks and get more soy afterwards. Well, because it's easier to I guess X-ray. Or you could go back to the seventies and get some bean bags. I guess, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's easier to X-ray through I guess the 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 soybean product fake breasts than it is to to go through saline from whatever. So just so you guys know now now know. Uh, fake breast implants are not only made out of saline solution, but they're also made out of soybean solution. So, so they're totally vegan. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to know at least. So that that was interesting to was me. Was like, she I found talking that... about her own breasts and explaining? I forget them? how it come up, it came up. Like she went into the restroom with another. <laughs> Say there. What are those made of? She... I'm glad you ask. Bean bags. It was. It was. <laughs> she. She. She went in. One of the other girls that was there wanted to to check him out or whatever. So they went in the restroom and did a. One little of the thing. other girls or one of the utter one girls. Of, yes. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Razzle hates me right now. No, I get it. I like puns. I don't hate you, Tom. I know. Tom. 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 Not as much as I hate myself. Um. Ooh, got <laughs> this dark. Is, this Aristotle. is a. This is a. This is a real quick. While we're while we're we're are, we're almost reaching our time here. This is a fact that I've had written down for a while that I wanna want to check. Uh, I wanted to mention, and those of you listening at home can. Uh, Before you say the fact, can you right. say, "Hey guys, chew on this." Hey guys, chew on this. Go to the fact. Time Warner originated when Time Incorporated merged with Warner Communications. Now this is where it gets fun. Warner Communications. Through the, the the through buying and selling of businesses, Warner Communications originated from a business that owned parking lots named Kenny National Company. KNC went around buying up DC Comics, Warner Brothers slash Seven Arts before it really got into motion pictures. It was known as Warner Brothers slash Seven Arts. Why did they Atlanta, cut it down to three arts? 
<laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a management company that everybody wants to get repped by. That's uh, a bit of inside baseball. You guys know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. You're, about. You're uh, an IMDb pro. They um <laughs> they went uh they they bought up Atlantic Records. They bought up a lot of things in the '60s, and eventually they dropped the parking operations and changed their name to Warner Communications in 1971. It's a real interesting read if you're if you pull it up on Wikipedia. It started off by a dude he owned some parking lots and he. They were successful, and he considering how it. awful parking is on that lot. You think they would have held on to some of those holdings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've parked on that lot. I parked in a pool where they think they filmed like <laughs> Forrest Gump to bring it back around. Actually, I swear to God, <laughs> Warner, uh, <laughs> Warner Brothers lot. I was just there last week. Uh, watching a, a taping of the new show Undateable. That oh, buddy. how was that? It was so fucking funny. Was it funny? Who is yeah, that? it's got. Uh, Doesn't that have uh, Ron Funches? It's got and... Undateable. It's got Ron Funches. It's got uh, Brent Morin. Brent Morin, really funny comic. They're Delia, all Crystalia. Crystalia, really funny comic. Uh, Rick Glassman, really funny. It's got. I'll tell you who's gorgeous on it. It's got uh, Ron Funches. Crystalia. Crystalia. Ron Funches is gorgeous. <laughs> um, on that. It's got fucking uh, Susan Sarandon and the who was her boyfriend? Who, Tom fucking the dude from the Hudsucker Proxy? Tim. Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins. What? Their daughter is so hot, and she's on the show. She uh, Susan Sarandon. Yeah, Susan Sarandon was. She's a. She's. Who was the Thighmaster woman? That was uh, Suzanne Summers. Summers. But anyways, the, I know they they do have a hot daughter. Yeah, she was topless and on yes, she in was Californication. Californication. Look that up, guys. Jerk it to that. Work. Not at work, guys. But anyways, <laughs> it, uh, Ava. Yes, a she's Murray so, Martino. She's so beautiful. Uh, but anyways, I went and seen a taping of Undateable, and that debuts in the sp- that debuts in January, I believe. It's a really really funny show. It's a re- it's it was it was way better than it. like when I heard my but you know I'm friends with Brent Moore and he was when I heard that they got cast on it and it's not a single it's a multi cam type of thing and a lot of those multi cams are kind of cheesy and hacky I'm like oh no whatever but it's a really funny show dude it's like it was hilarious well, that is uh, that's pl- that's good to hear it was hilarious and also the, the episode I seen guest starred uh, Tom Cavanaugh. Who also has a podcast on here? Um, he was he was an Ed. He was he was, he's been around. Uh, he a lot. used to do Mike and Tom eat snacks. Yes, yeah, yeah. he still does. I think on do occasion. They, still do yeah, yeah. Just, they it, they haven't done one in a while. It's very sporadic. Usually when they can get a minute yeah. to do it. Yeah, but he was a guest star on, it, and it was a really funny show. It's it really funny. You guys like it, it'll be probably by the time you guys listen to this, it'll be. I mean, you'll you, you'll be listening to this on Monday. In two days. So what Rasmus you, what you, you want one to of the do. producers of this show? What no. you want to do? But it's a really funny show. I want it to do really well because the episode I seen is hilarious. So what you got to do is mute the episode, yeah. play this podcast in the background, and at the first commercial break, yeah, it will sync up. It will sync up. <laughs> anyway, exactly. So there you there you have it. Time Warner, uh, Warner Communications, the internet provider that everybody hates, used to it's like a, operate parking lots. It's like on Thirty Rock how uh, the Shineheart Shine Company, Company owns like all. <laughs> yeah, everyone looks good <laughs> in the shine. Shine Heart. <laughs> that's, that's probably based off that type of a thing. Oh, of course. You know, of I course. just watched a Shine Heart based episode where they, they have to settle and they give each kid five five million dollars <laughs> because they dyed their skin. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, Thirty Rock. I could talk about Thirty Rock all day. That's funny. But well, not that you guys that are asking for that. It's a story for another podcast. Uh, unfortunately uh, no. we have hit our limit. No. Yeah. There's, if you look, if you, if you look at our, if you look at our time meter, we're all out of it. Yeah. It is. I can see it. It's in yeah. the red and it's it's shaking. It's I know. Actually, that's our fundraiser goal. <laughs> and there, I just saw steam come out of yeah. something. Yeah, we're trying. We're just trying to boil our. Uh, we're trying to boil funds. our vodka. Yeah, <laughs> but it keeps it keeps disappearing. I don't anyway, know what we're talking about. <laughs> well. Thank you a lot for Thank joining you, us, man. Thanks, I hope you had a good guys, time. For we sure me. did. Absolutely, this was fun. Uh, this I can is... kind of feel I've been one of the better guests you've had. Yeah, like, can, no. I, can I? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm getting pretty close. First thing this. we look for in a guest is uh, modesty. Modesty. And, uh, you look no further. It's just it's coming right out of your here. pores. <laughs> modesty out the yin yang. Yeah. The yin and the yang. So, uh, where can people find you just on the internet? Just follow me on Twitter at the Tom Sibley. And also download and check out his podcast. Oh yeah, check out the podcast Goof City podcast, and we watch wrestling podcasts. Yeah. And is there a, is there anything else coming up that you would yeah, like you to promote? Any... This is going to air this coming Monday. Yeah, do you have any commercials that you've been in because you're in so many? Sixteenth uh, of December. No, I have some stuff coming up, but we'll see. Yeah. Right, right now, on. I'll just plug the podcast. For now, just listen to his dulcet tones and hey. read his dulcet tweets. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 
And as always, uh, you can email us at twlpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter. TWL. Send them shirtless pics. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at twlpodcast on Twitter. At twlpodcast. Uh, That's all. <laughs> you can find us on Facebook or if you want to uh, talk to us individually. Yeah. Maybe you don't want Razzle to hear. You want to talk shit on Razzle. You want to talk shit on me to the other person. Absolutely. You can find us on Twitter. I am at osteoferocious. And I am wow. at my name is Razzle2. At my name is Razzle2. The number The number two. two. I'm gonna, I keep saying I'm going to change that in one of these eh, days. Who gets, you know, distinguish you from that other my name is Razzle, which you Are also you control. Are you like crazy proud of osteoferocious? Uh, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it's, it's it's great. I don't I get it. You. I, Thank I, you. I've always wondered. Like, well, I don't get it. I'm an idiot. What is that? Like osteoporosis it means something, right? No, no osteoporosis is something. Is, something. is, is like a disease. It's yeah. a disorder. And this is just a fun like. I don't How know. did you come up with that? Because I was like a calcium based rapper. Perhaps okay. that would be. A... I saw a rapper. In, yeah? in Williamsburg, he put up uh, like stickers and flyers everywhere, and his name was I, either his name or the name of the show. It was called Cerebral Ballsy. Oh yeah, I've there. Is that a real thing? They're okay. good. They're yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> one of the one of the DJs on Power One Hundred Six, the local hip hop affiliate in Los Angeles. It goes by the handle DJ Sour Milk. Ugh. Ew. It's this DJ drop. That's all. Well, I'm, I'm, fuck it. I'm going to start a hip hop group called Diabetes. <laughs> I might want to go back to the drawing board. No, no, I mean, no. I like where you're going. <laughs> Diabetes ease? No, no, no. Hey, Razzle, when you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> word of advice by Tom Sibley. Yeah, that's uh, George Harrison's song. George Harrison song. Hey, you know, is, I got my mind set on you. So there you go. That's uh, George Harrison talking. Well, guys, uh, thank you for While listening. While my guitar gently weeps. <laughs> thank <laughs> you for listening. Uh, here comes the sun. So guys, there we go. guys. Thank you for listening. Uh, we uh, hope you learned something. <laughs> hope you learned something. And uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, <laughs> as on, always. Hold on, hold on. I'll think of another one. Another George. Uh... The Quiet Beetle. Okay, he's got it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening. We hope you learned something. And uh, as always, if you can dream it, you're probably still asleep. <laughs> that. There we go. Now leaving Nerdist.com. 